Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Tech Tip Tuesday. Today our topic is going to be SQL Express vs. Full. Now, at this point, you've probably heard a few things about Express SQL versus Full SQL. You may have been recommended by support to consider going up to Full SQL. And we're going to talk about the differences between the two and why you might make the decision to go from Express to Full SQL. Now, the first thing that you need to be aware of when you're considering this is which version of SQL are you currently using? And there's an easy way to find that information out. And those instructions can be found here. Where, uh, with finding your SQL version. So the first thing you need to do is find out which SQL instance you're using, and then you need to go into SQL Management Studio and check that instance out. Um, so you may want to pause so that you've got these instructions up on your screen when you're actually running through this, but I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to find that information here. So in your Job Boss server folder, you will find a machine information.ini file which can be opened up in Notepad. When you open it up in Notepad, whatever is listed after this machine name equals is the name of your SQL server. Now sometimes you might see something like this listed where it's a name and then a backslash. That is called a name instance, named instance. And if you don't have anything there, it's just using the default instance of SQL Server on your machine. Now, since we know that this is our SQL Server instance, I'm going to go ahead and close machineinformation.ini, not save my changes, and I'm going to open up SQL Management Studio. Now, in SQL Management Studio, you want to go ahead and log in to that instance that you've seen that your job boss data is stored on. Uh, you want to log into it with an administrator that, or an account that's got administrative rights, typically the SA account. Once you're logged into that SQL instance, click on the new query button. And when the new query window opens up, type in select space at at version. All one word there. And then go ahead, click on the execute button. And down below here, you will be presented with the information about your SQL Server instance and edition. So it tells the name of your SQL Server. Uh, over here, it tells that I'm using SQL Standard Edition, 64-bit. And, uh, and so then we know that, okay, I'm running Standard, not, um, not an Express instance. Now, just to show you what an Express instance would give you in return, it's actually pretty much the same. But I'm going to go ahead and close out of this instance of SQL and log in to another instance that I've got on my server. Now, I know this is an Express instance, but just to show you the difference, we'll go in here to a new query again, select, add at version, execute, SQL Server 2008, and right here you see Express Edition with Advanced Services. Um, whether it's with Advanced Services or just Express Edition, the fact that it says Express lets me know that I'm running SQL Express. So now I know what version and revision of SQL I'm using. And so now I can go ahead and make some choices here uh, with my SQL to decide what I want to do next. Now, let's talk about the differences in Full SQL versus SQL Express. Again, you may have been recommended to go up to Full SQL, and you might be wondering what that really means to you. So SQL Express is the typical instance that we set up for customers, unless specified otherwise. And one of the main reasons that we use the SQL Express instance is that it is a free instance of Microsoft SQL Server. For that free price, it provides the, full, the functions of SQL Server mandatory for Job Boss, Synergy, Unipoint, and Knowledge Sync operation just with that instance. It's a great solution for a small number of users in a small network environment, and down the road it could be upgraded to full SQL if it needed to be. Um, so again, for the price of free, it is a great tool. Now, the limitations of SQL Express, though, are going to be in the resource department. So the first thing is the SQL Express will only use 
one processor and one gigabyte of RAM. So you may have a Cadillac server out there, but you're only going to use about a Honda equivalent of um, information from it because it's only going to take uh, those limited resources. Now, um, the next limitation is database size. So SQL Express only supports databases up to 10 gigabytes in size. Now that's a pretty big job boss database, but we do have customers that are well above that. It just depends on the number of jobs and things that you've recorded in your database. And so that is the next thing to keep in mind with SQL Express. And then finally, SQL Express does not include all of the features of full SQL. For example, if you want to use SQL Server reporting services, it uses a watered down version of that um, where it has some features, but not all. Um, and then it's also not necessarily designed for what's called high availability, which basically means if your tolerance for downtime with your SQL Server is less than zero, this may not be a great solution for you. Now let's go ahead and talk about the benefits of full SQL here. So full SQL will utilize all of your SQL's resources. It will use all of your available processors and it will use all RAM made available to SQL within the version limitations. And typically a uh, job boss sized customer is not going to have um, more RAM than SQL will be able to use on a server. That would only really be if you were running some type of a SQL server farm where you would get up into the numbers that SQL couldn't handle for RAM. Um, also, SQL is sort of a RAM hog, so it will take about as much as it can find available. So you can actually uh, regulate how much RAM SQL takes, making sure that you leave some for the rest of your operations. Um, as far as database size, you're virtually unlimited in how large your database can grow in a full SQL environment. It is designed for that high availability, and what this means is you can set up SQL with what's called failover clustering, where it's constantly doing backup data copies over to a backup SQL server, and if your original SQL server crashed, the other one would just step right into place, and you should experience almost no downtime or hiccups related to that. Um, it also includes the availability to schedule and run maintenance plans using the SQL agent, and it's got the full functioning capabilities of all the different things like SQL reporting services and, uh, and, and data management services and things like that. The limitations of full SQL are going to be the costing. Uh, first, there's the cost of license, and SQL is licensed either by Cal, which means that every Windows user that could possibly touch a database on your SQL server needs to have their own Cal, Client access license is what that's short for. Or you can license it by processor if you're in a very large organization. That's probably going to be the cost effective method. Um, but those licenses do cost money. The second cost is the cost of ownership. Now, Job Boss supports SQL as far as Job Boss's use of SQL but they're not going to support the configuration of those SQL maintenance jobs. They're not going to support um, any of the high availability setup or things like that. Um, so uh, SQL is very limited uh, support from Job Boss support. Again, only just what Job Boss uses of SQL. And then uh, the Job Boss Prof Professional Services Group does offer a little bit more assistance with some of the deeper functions of SQL. But again, it's limited. It's not a full-blown SQL administration um, service there that we're providing. So, with those things in mind, when do I make the switch from SQL Express to full SQL? The answer is, there's not a great answer. It really depends on your experience. Um, obviously, with that 10 gigabyte database limitation, anytime you see your database nearing 10 gigabytes, that would be a time to start planning the switch. Uh, if you purchase Synergy and plan to use it for document management, you probably want to go with full SQL because that will make your Synergy database grow very quickly. When you use document management with Synergy and you attach files to it, it actually brings those files into the database, breaking them down to ones and zeros and, and making them part of your SQL database. So again, it can grow very quickly at that point. Um, so you're probably going to get past that 10 gigabytes in very short order. Um, 
Approximately 20 to 25 concurrent job boss users is where we see a lot of customers make the switch. Um, and probably the, the next bullet point is the most important, just sort of overall job boss performance issues. Now, I'm not saying that if you see a particular issue in just in one module, that it's time to make the full switch to full SQL. But if overall you feel like job boss isn't performing as well as it does, all reports take longer than you think they should, or you've just kind of seen that degradation over time of, of performance, then it might be time to make that full SQL switch. And honestly, it's your call. And that's the final bullet point there. Um, you know, you need to decide what your tolerance is for the performance and when you might want to make that switch. So if you want to make that switch, what do you need to do? How do I get to full SQL? Well, you can purchase full SQL from any number of resources. You can go online and purchase it at any, you know, software reseller like a CDW, your local IT provider may be a SQL reseller. And I will also point out that Job Boss is a SQL reseller and we actually have very competitive pricing. One of the reasons we can do that is if you're using the Cal model of licensing, you actually are purchasing SQL in what's called a runtime edition, which means you can only use it with exact products. So Job Boss, Synergy, Knowledge Sync, etc. cetera. But um, because you're using it in that limited capacity, the pricing is very attractive. And even our regular processor licensing is very competitive with other prices that you'll find out there. If you're interested, contact your customer sales, uh, uh, customer success manager. Um, then, once you get SQL, whether it's from us or another channel, install your new instance of SQL. Again, if you purchase SQL but don't have somebody who's available and familiar with installing it, Job Boss Consulting can do that install for you for a, for a small fee. Otherwise, your local IT resources can, can set that up for you. Um, and finally, if you use your local IT resources to configure and set up your new SQL server and want to get stuff moved over to it, the two documents listed here in the knowledge base have uh, the information that you would need to go ahead and make that move. Um, and that should get you going. Again, Job Boss is here to help you. So if there is any questions that you have regarding whether or not you should move to SQL, full SQL, or just about the SQL that you do currently have, uh, reach out to your customer success manager or a professional services consultant, and we will be glad to assist you. Thank you for attending this week's Tech Tip Tuesday. Have a good day.